Hi everyone, this is Art Smalley, president of Art of Lean Incorporated, and today on behalf of the Lean Enterprise Institute, I have another short video for you. This one continues on the theme of situational leadership. Now in previous videos, we did a quick intro to the topic, and I shared with you what's called the D1-S1 quadrant, where you supply good direction or directive style leadership. And today we're gonna bump that up to what situational leadership calls the D2 or S2 case, where you actually employ coaching. And wanna talk about what's meant by the word coaching and the implications behind it. Now, this S2, D2 quadrant is characterized by the nickname disillusioned or frustrated learner. And I think many of you can relate to this. You probably try to debug your computer sometimes or answer a complex question, or maybe like me, you're juggling and you can't get past that 10th or 12th ball for some reason. At some point, the newness and excitement wears off and you become the disillusioned learner. And this is true for just about everything in life, even employees and work in Toyota. I experienced it many times on many different projects and cases. D2 is characterized by some knowledge and skill, inconsistent performance, sometimes high, sometimes medium, sometimes low, and the reality you don't know how to move forward, okay? You're stuck, you don't know how to do the next step, next stage, and you're, looking, you're still looking for help or guidance. You've got most of the basics, but something's holding you back. And additionally, it's not just about skill. The D2 bucket is very much about will, okay? There's an emotional component to this side of it because you're feeling discouraged and frustrated, overwhelmed, demotivated, and you're confused and probably even concerned about what to do, and other external conditions can come into play. Now, when confronted with this quadrant, what the situational leadership model wants you to do is supply a higher degree of supportive leadership in addition to directive leadership. And by supportive leadership, they mean embodying good empathy and understanding, looking at it from the learner's perspective, their point of view. Why do they think it's difficult? Why are they struggling? How does it feel? And you want to let them know there's a way forward confidence to go forward and try again, re-engage, keep going, that this can be done, okay? And to do that, you have to, of course, first comfort them on the, the support side of it, and then go back to the details of the directive leadership, but more specific. As a coach, it's your responsibility to help them identify why are they struggling? What is the exact key point they're not grasping yet or executing correctly? You need to demonstrate and explain it or arrange for somebody who can demonstrate and explain it properly. Repeat and coach, repeat and coach. And I joke it's, it's PDCA, except now it's plan, do, coach and act, okay? And repeat the cycle again and again. But it's your job to help them close that struggle gap. And let's, let's go through some examples, uh, real life as well as Toyota. I'm big into sports, martial arts, and a variety of other topics and hobbies. Right now it's basketball, because that's what my daughters play. And I love going on to this site called Championship Productions, okay? I'm not affiliated with them in any way, shape, or form, but I buy a lot of their videos because you can get videos from the top coaches around the world, predominantly the United States, but around the world as well, and get specific answers to problems or struggles you're facing. So you don't know how to beat a man defense. You don't know how to break down a 1-3-1 a trap. Okay, there's answers out there. Highest coaches in the nation teaching their players you know, NBA play, players that are going into the NBA or Olympics are being taught this way by expert coaches exactly what to do, how to do it, why to do it this way, why not to do it this way sometimes, and how to fix the most common problems. So it's not easy. And the best coaches make a lot of money because they are experts in supplying the skill and the will component of doing things. Now, another example is, is Toyota standardized work and job instruction. I use this previously as a general example, and this is a, a JI template technically, but standardized work, same thinking, employees are gonna struggle with some aspect of the job. There might be 20 steps in standardized work, okay, whatever the number is. You're not gonna struggle with all 20. At some stage, two or three are gonna give you the most difficulty, and coaches, good coaches can hone in specifically on those two or three points, two or three steps that are giving you the most trouble, help you get better at that so you're able to do the task overall. So it's really identifying the right key points and right sections you're struggling with, and then moving on and getting better at the overall as well. Now, a third example of this is a 100% Toyota example. We actually have Toyota problem-solving coaching forms, okay? 
Toyota doesn't release them to the outside world from what I know. This is an old one of mine. I helped translate it many years ago when I worked there and their versions are different and better today, but they're, they're still the same concept from what I see. In the form, when you're doing problem solving, coaching with somebody, they go step by step. Okay, and this is just the first three. Um, you look at what they're doing and you give them rating or feedback, one, two, or three. One is below expectation, two is meet expectation, three is exceeds expectation. And it's your job of coach to help them, if they're a one, get to a two. If they're a two, help them get to a three. If they're a three, celebrate, explain why, and challenge and motivate them to go on to the next step, next phase of it, okay? But the point is, the feedback box there is blank. It's not cookie cutter. It's not just saying, oh, do the steps or answer these open-ended questions. It doesn't help them to say, you know, what's the problem here? What's the root cause? They're struggling at that point and you gotta help them break through that barrier and get to the next level, okay? And there's, again, guidelines and specific ways they recommend doing that, but again, not everything's on the sheet of paper. That's why you're the coach. You have to go beyond the paper, address the skill and will of the situation and help them get through. That's on the coach. The answers aren't pre-written for you to read off of some laminated card. I mean, if it was, we could all just call 1-800-GET-LEAN and, and you know, you wouldn't need coaches or consultants, I guess, then. So that's three quick examples, what I mean by good coaching. It's not just telling people to do steps. It's not just being supportive. It's not just asking open-ended questions or things like that. As a coach, there's a very high bar and responsibility that comes with it in the real world and in Toyota. You wanna help them with directive and supportive advice, help them close the gap, figure out what they're struggling with, how to proceed, how to do it, embody good empathy, help with their confusion and frustration, give them the confidence to go forward. Okay, and if you can do that, you're a very good coach and the world needs more of those. So next video, we're gonna move on to what's called S3D3 situations and how that turns the tables a bit. It's called supporting. And I hope to see you in the next video. In the meantime, stay safe and have a great day.